Hey everyone, I'm fairly experienced at building computers, but it seems like every time I blink, AMD brings out a new series of CPUs. For example, in 2020, they released the 5000 series, and then two years later, they rolled out the 6000 series, but also the 7000 series. AMD also has an 8000 series of CPUs that they launched in 2024, but what's the difference? And if you're looking to build a new PC, which CPU series should you be looking at? I'll answer these questions and more in this video. Designing a CPU is hard. You can't just glue some silicon wires together and just hope for the best. It doesn't work out like that. It takes years and many millions of dollars for Intel and AMD to actually design and then produce the newest CPUs. And every time their bosses get on stage and launch a new set of CPUs, what they're actually launching is a new microarchitecture of CPU. Essentially, the chip makers are constantly reviewing where all of the circuits and components will go within a CPU chip so that the CPU can perform as best as possible. This is not a straightforward process and is why a massive multi-billion dollar company can spend many years designing a new CPU launch only to see it delayed at the last minute like the 9000 series Ryzen Zen 5 launch or have various instability issues that in some cases just can't be fixed. I'm looking at you Intel. Because of how complex this can all be, in 2007 Intel launched a new way of designing and launching their CPUs which they called the TikTok strategy. No, they weren't going to start dancing to silly 45 second clips on social media. This was the idea of having a big CPU launch every few years and then refining the microarchitecture so that the chip maker could squeeze as much efficiency and profit out of the CPUs as possible. And that's basically what AMD have been doing with their Ryzen CPUs too. They launched the Zen 1 1000 series in 2017, which is when it bought the awesome 7900 chip, which blew my mind at the time. And then the following year, they introduced Zen Plus with the 2000 series launch. Equally, the Zen 2 3000 series came out in 2019, and then the 4000 series came out the following year in 2020, which is also when the Zen 3 5000 series also got released, confusingly. AMD did then release a 6000 series upgrade in 2022, but this was a much smaller launch and upgrade than some of the other TikTok enhancement launches. Finally, AMD released the new Zen 4 series in 2022. This was AMD's first CPU lineup that actually supported DDR5. All the previous CPUs were stuck with DDR4 support. This new Zen 4 or 7000 series is pretty awesome though. I have the Ryzen 7600 in my home lab NAS build and it does a great job. However, the Zen 4 mini upgrade then came out in 2024 with the 8000 series launch. And then in mid 2024, the new 9000 series came out. And that's great, but with four entire microarchitecture launches in the last four years alone, you could be forgiven for being confused. Which one should you buy, for example? You might think that the decision is obvious. If the 5000, 7000 and 9000 series are AMD's first attempt at a new microarchitecture, surely you should wait and buy the more efficient tweak chips like the 6000 and 8000 series, right? Well, not really. It kind of depends what you're doing with them, I guess. Often the tweaked CPUs like the Ryzen 6800U and the Ryzen 8500G are pretty good for budget gaming builds, home theater PCs and laptops especially because they're much more power efficient than the previous gen chips. They also have integrated graphics, meaning that they are sometimes known as APUs, accelerated processing units, which are kind of a mix of CPUs and GPUs. That means you can potentially, in theory, power entire games just from your CPU, well, your APU, without needing to buy a separate graphics card. When launching the Ryzen 8600G chip earlier this year, AMD were eager to point out they can achieve fairly good gaming performance, which was sort of accurate if you play at a lower resolution. For 1080p and 720p gaming, you could get half decent frame rates when gaming entirely for your CPU. And that's pretty amazing considering the integrated graphics has always been considered a little bit of a gimmick more than anything else. There are some downsides to be aware of, however. Even though the 8600G is a mid-range chip, it doesn't get amazing gaming performance. It often struggles to hit 30 FPS and medium graphical settings when playing at full HD. If you wanted to game at a high resolution or simply achieve smoother frame rates, you'd probably want to buy a separate discrete graphics card. And then you may as well just buy a CPU from the previous 7000 series, such as the 7600, because that's a much more powerful processing chip than the 8600G. It frequently gets better gaming performance when both chips are paired with a separate graphics card, for example. Now, that might seem confusing because I keep saying that the next microarchitecture launch, like the 8000 series, makes a range of improvements compared to the previous series, like the 7000 launch. However, here's a key point. Often the enhanced CPUs are more power efficient, but at the cost of processing power. 
The 6000, 8000 and probably the 10,000 series of CPUs or APUs are usually not as good pure processing workhouses as the previous gen. That's why I went with the Ryzen 7600 in my home lab NAS and a 5900X in my workstation PC. I care more about processing power and having 12 awesome CPU cores than some efficiency tweaks. The other big flaw of some enhanced CPUs is that they come with less PCI Express lanes. For example, the Ryzen 8500G only supports four PCI Express lanes for the main graphics card slot, which basically means that any separate graphics card will run at a quarter of the bandwidth of many other CPU configurations. The M2 NVMe slot will also run at just X2 speeds, limiting it to just 4,000 megabits per second. As a result, if you were building your own gaming computer and got a bargain on an 8500G, you might want to return it if you want a separate graphics card because it limits things a bit too much. And that's the main thing to note here. Yes, it is good that AMD are reviewing their CPU microarchitectures and squeezing extra efficiency and features like integrated graphics and AI features. But if you actually wanted a workstation PC or you intended on buying a graphics card anyway, a separate one, then you should probably stick to the main 5000, 7000 and 9000 series launches. If you wanted to know more about PCI Express lanes and discrete GPUs, you can check out this separate video that discusses this topic in a lot more detail. And that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the thumbs up button and please subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.